All right. Welcome to lesson 6.4 on the distributive, distributive property, sometimes called the distribution property. So in previous grades, we could model a multiplication of 3 by 6, or 3 times 6, by showing you three rows of 6. And you would count them all up at the beginning. This is called an array. But this could also be so, thought of as three rows of 1 plus 5. For example, here's the 5 right here. And here's the 1. All right? So it could also be think, thought of as three rows of 1 plus 5. What other ways could this be split up? Well, if you just take the 5 and you split it up into the different parts it could have, you could have 3 times 2 plus 4, and 3 times 3 plus 3. Notice I have to keep the parentheses in there, otherwise it would, the order of operation would change it. And the final one is 3 times, sorry, 3 times 5 plus 1. All of the above, if you notice, don't change the final answer. The final answer, even if you do it, is still 18. Okay, bear with me. I do have a reason. Let's look at another possibility here. Here's five rows of 12. If you count up, you find that on the right-hand side, there are 60 on the, left, on the right, and there is five by 12 on the bottom and left. And that's our array that we've set up. Okay. You could split these two boxes into a whole bunch of different groups, one being 5 by 10 and 5 plus 2, 5 times 2. All right. So what I've done here is taken and done this. Here's 5 times 10, and here is 5 rows of 2. Just setting them up. Okay. If you turn the page, you'll see what I mean. Here's five, and here's the ten two split. And notice that the five by ten gives us fifty, and the five by two gives us ten. And so even though we split up one of the numbers, it's still going to give us the same answer. So this could be represented as 5, 1, 2, 10 plus 2. And that would give us 5 times 10 plus 5 times 2. All right. So we all know we know that 5 onto 10 plus 2 is equal to 50 plus 10. What you're looking at right there is what we call the distribution factor. The distribution property, sorry. Let's take a look at another. If you think about the distribution that we just did, 5 onto 10 plus 2 is equal to 5 onto 10 plus 5 onto 2, we can generalize this using variables. Now, all it means is that this multiplies by the first one. So if we had a onto b plus c, it's going to be this one times the first one and then t plus the, first, the outside times the, uh, the second one. So this becomes a times b plus a times c. Okay. So it's a times b and a times c. So let's do another quick example using the distributive property. I'm having a hard time saying that. The distributive property in a symbolic way. We're getting, rid, getting rid of the tiles. So I've got 3 on 4 plus 5. Don't worry, we'll put variables in here in a moment. This means 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 5 is 15. And as you see that if you put the 4 and the 5 together, that's a 9. And 3 times 9 is 27. And so is 12 plus 15 being 27. Okay, so what happens when we have variables? Well, let's look at the tiles first. How does this work out? How do you represent x plus 2? Well, x plus 2 looks like this. There's x plus 2. Okay, so if I want to take and have three groups 
of x plus 2, all we need to do is draw x plus 2 three times. Right, so there's 1, 2, 3. So we total it all up. You're going to find that I have 3x's plus 6. So we know that we add on to x plus 2 is 3x plus 6. Now, let's expand the, using the following distribution model. But now let's take and not use, I say we're going to do the tiles again just for one more practice here. So I've got x minus 3, and I want two groups of x minus 3. So first, what are the tiles for x minus 3? Well, there's x, and here is minus 3. All right. Now, to model two of these groups, I need to have x and x and negative 3. and negative 3. So there's my two groups of x and two groups of negative 3. So how many do we have? We have 2 x minus 6. So we know that 2 onto x minus 3 equals 2 x minus 6. Okay, so let's do it now without having the tiles involved. What if you want to do 3 c plus 3 onto c plus 4? We're going to do the same thing we did before. In your assignments, you're going to go write the question down, 3 onto c plus 4. And it's always the same. First one and the second one. So it's 3 times c plus 3 times 4. And you have to show me this just up here because that's the work. Otherwise, you can go to the back of the book and copy it out. 3 times c is 3c, and 3 times 4 is 12. All right. Okay, you do the one, you do the next one. Four onto B plus five. All right. So four onto B plus five, we have four onto B plus five, four onto B plus four onto five. So four Bs plus four fives is twenty. There you go. It's actually pretty straightforward. So, let's get started with negatives now. When there's negatives involved, you have to think of, let's subtract 4 as a negative number. Okay? So you could rewrite this and we get 2 onto x plus negative 4. You can think of it that way. Some people, they just do it in their head. And they know this is x minus 4. They just know that this negative, this subtract, is part of this negative 4. So to do the expansion, all right, if you rewrote it, 2 onto x plus negative 4, you'd get 2 onto x plus 2 onto negative 4. So that gives you 2x plus negative 8, which when you simplify it, gives you 2x minus 8. Okay, actually converting it back is here. All right. So that's your add the opposite. It's what we taught you when we were working with negatives and integers. Now, if you can, it's probably better for you just to think of this here being a negative 4. Because then you end up with 2 times x plus 2 times negative 4. And you don't have to worry about doing add the opposite. So what we end up with here is 2x, and 2 times negative 4 is simply negative 8. A little bit easier, I think, than doing the add the opposite. But if you need to add the opposite, make sure you do so. The most important thing is to make sure you get the correct answer. This converting to adding the opposite is very helpful when we get very um, complicated negatives. So let's have you try 3 onto x minus 8. You try that one. All right. So. 3 bracket x take away 8, 3 onto x plus 3 onto negative 8 gives you 3x minus 24. 3 times 8 is 24, and a positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, now try the next one. All right, now again, 
we have 2 on the 9 take away C, and that causes a little bit of difficulty. So some people like to rewrite it. There's no problem with that if, you, if it helps you. So now turn the page and we'll expand it. So I just wrote down to help you out 2 onto 9 plus negative C. All right, so now this is 2 onto 9 plus 2 onto negative C. So this is 18, and then 2, times, two negative C's is negative 2C. Think of that as being two negative X tiles. Okay. okay. Next one. What's the area of the following? Well, area is equal to length times width. So that means I've got 3 on the left, and I've got here, this is x from here to here, and here is a 2, x tile and 2. So this is x plus 2. So my area is going to be 3 times x plus 2. Distribution law then becomes down below here. We have now got, this is what we're working with. So that's 3x plus 3 times 2. That gives me 3x plus 6. So the area of this rectangle is 3x plus 6. Okay? So to get started on the assignment, if you have any questions, come in and see me. Otherwise, good luck, and we will see you in our next lesson.